There are approximately 3,800 kilometers of coastline in Estonia. We also have inland bodies of water, Lake Peipsi and Lake Wurtsjärv, the Emajoki River, and the Narva River. These and many smaller inland bodies of water have played a significant role in the development of our country, nation, and culture. Throughout history, fishing has been the main source of livelihood for those who live on the water's edge. Fishing has helped us to build houses, educate our children, and create a secure future for our families. The first Estonian fishing cooperatives were set up at the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century. These consisted mainly of men from one given village and three or four boat crews. Though the cooperatives were called fishermen societies, they were constituted of professional fishermen in the modern sense. Due to the development of more effective fishing gear, increases in catches, and the development of a national catch plan, fishermen formed larger structures. Power lies in collective action was the slogan under which collective organizations of fishermen were constituted during the Soviet period. During this period, random mass catches were made from the sea and inland bodies of water. Emphasis was placed on simply fulfilling the Soviet harvest quota. In the 90s, during the transition period when Estonia regained her independence, Though rules from the Soviet period no longer functioned in the fishing industry, but new ones hadn't been created yet either. Because of the random nature of fishing, no overview of Estonian fish resources existed. When Estonia joined the European Union, the situation changed. Control over fish resources was restored, and the assessment of fish resources was once again carried out by scientists. Catch limits have been developed on the basis of international quotas pursuant to data collected through the monitoring of fish resources. One of the most common catch methods in our coastal sea and inland water bodies is net fishing. Fishing nets are also called gill nets. Fishing with gill nets has always been considered the domain of professional fishermen. The principle behind gill nets involves fish getting entangled in the net or becoming wedged in the mesh. Today's gear is made from monofiber roughly resembling horsehair. The depth at which nets are placed depends on whether the fish are swimming in the upper, middle, or bottom layers of the water. Since fish caught from the coastal sea tend to stay in the lowest layer of the water, that's where nets are placed. The catch properties of gill nets depend on whether the net is visible to the fish and how tense the net thread is. When fish notice a loosely arrayed net, they try to pass through it while tense mesh makes fish cautious. The reaction of fish also depends on the visibility of the gill net thread. The thread should be so fine that fish don't notice it, but it also needs to be strong enough that it won't break when the catch is hauled in. The net is deployed from the boat and moves slowly forward across the underwater contour lines, as fish usually swim along the contour lines. Nets are put in place with anchors. Once an anchor has been dropped into the water, a buoy is tied to it. Several gill nets connected to one another are called a line of net. At the end of the net line, another buoy is dropped in and tightened with a trip line. The net line's end buoy is dropped with the symbol of the owner of the fishing gear and details 
about his fishing rights. Ice fishing isn't merely a hobby of anglers fishing with a line and hook, but the everyday work of fishermen at lakes Pepsi and Wurtsjärv, where fish are caught with gill nets. In winter, fish are drowsy, sleeping more and moving around near the bottom. Ice fishing begins when the surface of the water freezes over and continues for as long as the ice conditions are suitable. Selleks on oleks on olemas mul siin ka siis 25-26 meetrit pikk kirre latt, mille ma siis ajan siia jää alla. Järgmisena ma panen talle nööri karabiiniga järgi. Ma võtan teiselt poolt selle kirre latti august välja. Siis ma saan selle nööri kätte ja nööri pidi ma tõmbangi selle sama uuesti selle võrgu jää alla sisse. Siis me teeme seda tööd kahe kesi ja me lükkame selle siis latti siia jää alla. Nii, ja nüüd me õppa ka. Ja nüüd ta läheb siia. Nii, nüüd on ta all. Nöör on kindel ja nüüd me läheme, teeme ühe vahe augu. Et me saame seda irre latti nüüd edasi lükata. Sellega me nüüd otsime jää alt selle irre latti üles. Ja nüüd me lähme edasi. Nüüd on üks auk veel teha, kus me võtame selle irre latti välja. Nii, nüüd me meelitame selle asja siia nüüd. Kudagi viisi üles. Oja, oja. Nüüd ongi meil see nöör käes. See nöör on käes ja nüüd me läheme teise augu juurde ja sealt me hakkame võrku sisse laskuma. Ma seon ta nüüd siin kinni. Kindlalt. Kontrollin üle, et see jumala pärast lahti jookse. Meedu peame hakkama otsast pihta. Abiline juba tõmbabki mul. Tõesti on üles võrgu karabiini, oma vahel kokku ja valmis ta ongi. Tinarööör viib selle asja põhja ja korknööör hoiab selle võrgu üleval. Temal peab olema nüüd nii palju välja arastatud, et kui nüüd siia see kala tuleb siia sisse, et ta kohe põhja ei vaju sellega. Ta peaks oma nina siia sisse panema ja kuna kohal on siin tuvitavad lõpusääred, Need on nagu nuad siin, need on nii teravad, et siin tegelikult sõrvega ei taagi puutada. Tal ei ole palju siin vaeva näha, et ta siia sisse jääb. Kui on iga külm meil ära olnud, siis me tuleb lihtsalt tuuraga meil siis auk laht ja see sama tokikene väike tööd märgistab ära, et mul on nüüd 50 meetrit on võrku siin. Siin on nüüd võrgud kinni seotud oma vahel ja siis ma üritan selle nüüd lahti teha. Minul on ta nööridega, niitidega nii see alla lahtud, mul omal mugavam on. Ja nii ma lapingi selle võrgu siia kenasti augu ääre peale. Teisest otsast on ta muidugi nööriga kinni pandud, et me saame ta tagasi tõmmata. Ja nüüd ma käin selle 50 meetrit niisi läbi. Ja siit otsast me saame kala kohe. Siit tuleb meil jälle kala. Laatika pois. No, tegelikult see on nii väike laatikas, et ma hea meelega laseks ta tagasi. 
kenasti elu peale. Äkki ta ütleb teistele edasi, et nad järgmine aasta tagasi tuleksid. In the Baltic Sea, midwater pelagic as well as demersal, meaning bottom trawls are used. These work on the principle that fish are directed into the trawl bag trailing behind a ship. In Estonian waters, it's mainly Baltic herring and sprat that are caught with trawls. An echo sounder is an important tool of trawl fishing. It indicates the water layers in which fish shoals are swimming. The trawl is deployed on the basis of the echo sounder's depth indications. A trawl net is fishing gear in the shape of a funnel pulled behind a boat, consisting of towing wires, trawl boards and cables connecting them with the gear wings, the body of the net, and the cod end. The task of the boards is to keep the trawl open. The middle part of the gear is made of a large mesh net and the cod end of a small mesh net that fish can't swim through. The moving net wall scares the fish, and the school that tries to escape is gathered into the ever-narrowing part of the gear. From there, tired fish finally end up in the cod end. A trap net is another form of fishing gear widely used all over the world. Traps can be left on the bottom for a long time without removal from the water. The pot is checked constantly in order to remove living fish. Trap nets can be located in a place where it's impossible to use other types of fishing gear. Trap nets are like fish traps. Fish swim into them easily, but it's difficult for them to get out. An industrial trap net uses complex traps that are hundreds of meters long. A typical trap net consists of a net wall extending from the bottom to the surface. This is called the leader. The leader directs fish into the heart of the trap. The V-shaped wings of the heart don't allow fish to find an exit and direct them towards the mouth of the trap. The mouth and body of the trap net are joined by a narrowing tunnel. Round or quadrangular structural elements keep the body of the trap net open. In the body, there are funnels. Fish that can't find their way back move towards the pot and finally get caught in it. Trap nets are classified as either pelagic or fike nets, depending on their placement depth. The cutoff point is three meters. Pelagic nets are used when the water is deeper than three meters. Nüüd lävad topel tankrud alguses. Paistab ja tankrud on korralikult põhjas. Ja no nii, nüüd ongi juhta ja sisse laskmine. Tiivase pullad hakkavad vee alla vajuma juba. See näitab ka seda, et minul on ketti raskused ja kõik on nagu õieti pandud. See on keesmärk, et ketti viiks selle põhja ilusti. Nii, nüüd meil sai juhta, et sai otsa. Ja nüüd hakkab minema siis karja ja osa. Kõigepealt lähevad nüüd tagasi löögi nurgad. Nii ja nüüd lähevadki kere rõnga osad nüüd. Nüüd on meil siis mõrd kere sees. Me läheme sõidama nüüd üldse mõrra kere juurde. Suud me poolt hakkan tulema. Ja vabiline vaadata täpselt, et kuskil veel ei ole jäänud tiiru peale enne kui ta ankrut külge paneb. Peame nüüd selle köiega, mis meil seal nurga köis oli, selle veel selle ankru, peame põhja kinni veel. Jõuga. Me siis peame ka teise pole ära ja see mõrg on juba püügis. Kõigil ankru otsa läevad need suksed pikad paelad pullatega, et pärast me saame sügisel need mõrrad kätte või siis suvel, kui me võtame nad välja pesemiseks. Ja on 
no one get out there. So. No one get out there. 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 No one get out No one get out there. No No one get out there. No one get out there. No one get out No one get out there. 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 No one get out Fike nets are used in a manner similar to pelagic nets for fishing in the sea, as well as in lakes. While the minimum catch depth of pelagic nets is three meters, fike nets are used in shallower waters. Coastal fishermen who fish alone on the sea prefer simple trap nets that can easily be handled from a rowboat. The pound net, or kakuami, is a passive fishing device. Originating from Japan, the kakuami was brought to Estonia in 1938 from the Far East. This turned out to be an exceptionally efficient form of fishing gear and remains in use. A pound net is the largest fish trap that stays in the same place for the entire season. It consists of the leader, the heart with its V-shaped wings, the path, one or two funnels, and the open-topped pot. The path that starts from the heart directs fish from the funnel, which is situated several meters higher, to the spacious fish box. Pound nets are used when fishing for Baltic herring in springtime. This is a traditional and environmentally friendly form of fishing gear. Compared to the regular trap net, it's possible to catch larger numbers of fish with a pound net. There is more oxygen in the spacious fish box, which has an effect on the quality of the catch. It's easier to empty a pound net. Fishing with a pound net is one of the most efficient methods of all. Pound nets are also used for catching garfish. Garfish are the most active travelers of Estonian fish. It's the only fish species that migrates regularly between the Baltic Sea and the North Sea. In winter, during Christmas time, they live in the North Sea. During spring and autumn, they visit the Baltic Sea to spawn. When the fishing season is over, 
pound nets are taken out of the water. Then they're cleaned, repaired, and prepared for the next season. Yeah, See püügi osa on täna nagu kõige väiksem. Et ta kestab meil no heal juhul kaks nädalat. Aga aga vaihtööde osas panemine, parandamine, kokku tegelikult need muud tööd võtavad aega kuu pool teist kokku. People began fishing for eel more widely along the coastal areas and from inland water bodies at the beginning of the 20th century, when eel could be marketed as a delicacy in cities and abroad. Estonian peasants didn't usually use this snake-like fish for food. At the beginning of the 20th century, soap was boiled down from eels on the island of Saarema. In the 1970s, Eel tended to be caught more from internal bodies of water, mainly from Lake Wurtsjärv. Eels are caught with a line trap called the eel fight. Eel traps are small traps without wings, consisting of two low frames placed opposite to each other and a short leader up to a half a meter high connecting the frames. When eel traps are joined together, a chain is formed. This is called an eel fike. I have been here for about 15 years. 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 I have been here Tangere mõrd on lihtsalt väiksema silmaga ja, ja kui suurt kala püüda, siis peaks see silma suurus kaks korda nii suur olema. Siis saaks suurt kala ka aru. Ühtegi silma ei tohi katki ole. Kui üks silm on katki, siis angeras see ei enam ei ole. Ta lihtsalt teeb see laugu ja, ja ta on meeskonna, meeskonna kala, ütleme. Tema läheb. Kui üks on läinud, on kõik järel. Smelt nets were historically known as smelt traps. Smelt, which belong to the salmon family, come to Pärnu Bay in spring, and from there they swim to the Pärnu River to spawn. Smelt are an anadromous fish. They live in the sea, but spawn in rivers. The working principle of sen nets is the following. A section of a body of water is surrounded with a sen net, and the net is drawn together in order to secure the catch. There are two types of demersal sens. In the sea, demersal seines are used for catching flounder, 
and also to fish for pike perch and perch in Lake Papesi at a distance from its banks. The construction and the functioning principles of these two are similar. A symmetrical net resting on the bottom, but not reaching the surface, is thrown in a triangular or round shape to the bottom of the body of water. Send nets are dragged out simultaneously to both wings of an anchored boat. The headline of the wings and the cod end are equipped with bobs at the mouth for opening the sen net. Weights are attached to the bottom headlines. A thick, heavy rope is used for dragging the net, which stirs up bottom mud when dragged along the sea floor. The muddy water scares fish into a narrow corridor with the clouds of silt approaching from two sides. In muddy water where visibility is bad, fish swim between the wings of the net and from there into the cod end. Lestan oda ka nii et lased ankru sisse, siis lased kõige pealt ühe kõige, siis tuleb sinna vahepeale tuleb see pehe noot ja siis teise kõigega lähed uuesti sinna ankru juurde tagasi ja võtad ankru peale ja siis hakkad nagu kerima välja neid kõise ja siis ta nagu koondab selle lesta sinna kokku ja nood tuleb taganti ja korjab ära. Ta aarab üsna suure maale, see mingi ring on kolm kilomeetret kuskil. No, lesta võib püüda õngega, siis võrguga, pöhjanoodaga, traaliga. Ja traal püügi viga on see, et sa ei tea, kas seal all on sul kala või ei ole kala või. Aga siin tõmbad selle tunnikese seda kõit ja Sul on kohe teada, kas seal on mõtet veel püüda või pole mõtet püüda. Et valid uue koha või lähed koju ära. No ega ma sunniviisiliselt tege ei, ütleme nii, et jälle. See on ikkagi suke, kutsumus või obi. Obi ja töö on koos. Et vanasti sai siis, kui sõjavest tulim, siis sai siin seda asja alustatud nagu ja siis vahepeal Atlandil kaugel seda seinnooda püüki tehtud. Ja Siis tuli see valitsuse vahetus, vene riik sai läbi ja sai need laevad ostetud ja pangalaenudega. No ja alguses oli jälle neid rohkem, ütleme nii, aga siis läks ja siin nagu nihu ja siis sai ainult ühegi edasi mind. Nagu. Kala oli ka vähe ja no, nüüd. aga nüüd praegult on jälle normaalne, nii ta käib. Kalur loodab iga aasta. Nüüd kala tuli tagasi, nüüd on jälle meel hea ja ka see käibki nii, et üles alla kogu aeg. Et kelle, kelle on kusagil parem ja kelle, kelle on keevem. Ja... In the open waters of Lake Pepsi, a special net called a mutnik is used. A mutnik or demersal sen is a form of fishing gear designed to catch fish that swim close to the bottom of a body of water. The name mutnik comes from the Russian word mutit, which means making something turbid. Fishing with a mutnik differs from fishing for flounder with a demersal seine only by virtue of using different materials for the hauling lines. When fishing for flounder, a soft rope is used for stirring up mud from the bottom, but with a mutnik, a net that has been folded and tied up is used instead. The clouds of muddy water that are stirred up by the dragging of the mutnik along the bottom of the body of water frighten fish of all sizes into the net. The undersized fish that are found in the net are released back into the lake.
Along with modern fishing gear, we should continue to honor old traditional fishing methods as well. The simplest tow net is a beach sen used for dragging the catch to the beach. What characterizes a tow net is the fact that its net wall has to extend from the bottom to the surface when the net is hauled in. Fish are gathered in the cod end. A tow net with the simplest construction has equally long wings on both sides of the cod end. There are hauling lines at the ends of the wings. The line that's deployed first is called the heel line, and the one deployed last is the running line. In cases where the net wings are really of equal length, the hauling lines are pulled out simultaneously. The asp is the largest member of the carp family in Estonia and is the only predator among them. The asp is found primarily in Lake Pepsi and Lake Wurtsjärv and in the larger rivers that these lakes are connected to, such as the Emajogi and the Narva. There is a year-round ban on fishing for asp and the species has been entered into the Estonian Red Data Book. A lamprey or sea lamprey is a jawless fish. The Narva River is the biggest river in Estonia where lampreys are found. At the end of July, lampreys gather in the Narva River to spawn. Lampreys are active at night. During daytime, they hide on the bottom beneath stones and roots. Lamprey pots are tied to a main line, both sides of which are anchored. The anchors are equipped with boys that mark the location of the trap. The current holds the pot against the bottom, facing the sea, and lampreys swim into the pot in order to hide. Ja 
6,8 mm teada paksusest materjalist. Ja nii, et on tähtis see on. Aga miks on siis haugud sinna haugun, sest ei vee vahetus peab siis olema. People value their free time more and more, trying to find hobbies that take them into nature and provide enough physical activity. Fishing is definitely an active way of spending your spare time. If you've had enough of casting your spinning rod, you can try a calmer activity, which is definitely not less exciting. Fishing with a bottom line, also known as a long line. This is fishing gear that is placed in the water in the evening. Using a long line in industrial fishing has lost its importance in modern times. This is mainly an activity of hobby fishermen, and of some coastal fishermen too. A long line is a trap, and the way it works involves baiting fish hooks. A bottom long line consists of the main line and multiple hooks attached to the line by snoods. Putting a bottom long line in is carried out in much the same way as the putting of nets into water. At first a weight and signal flag are put in to which the long line has been attached earlier. Then the long line is deployed into the water. Finally, another anchor and a signal flag go in at the other end of the line. Using different fishing methods and gear calls for thorough knowledge of the way of life and movement of fish, preservation of yield levels, as well as the protection of fish resources, requires close cooperation between fishermen and scientists. Only in this way will future generations have something to put on the table from the sea, lakes, and rivers. <laughs>